Hello everybody, you're welcome back again to the Reggae Appreciation Society. In the eternal words of Shakespeare, no not this one, this other Shakespeare, people choose music, but sometimes there are people that music itself chooses. A perfect example of this phenomenon is the front man of the group that is the subject of today's video, the one and only Toots and the Metals. In Toots Hibbert's own words, I live to sing because I have to sing. If we are looking at singers on a scale, Toots Hibbert can easily be listed among the greatest vocalists to ever live. The Jamaican music industry officially took off after the island's independence in 1962, and on deep analysis, Toots and the Metals can not only be described as pioneers, but are part of the foundation and the DNA of Jamaican music. And while they never achieved the same commercial success and popularity of the Whalers, they definitely had the same cultural impact on reggae as we know it today. They were not only an integral part of the evolution of the sound from ska to rock steady, but have been credited with coining the name reggae to identify the new form of Jamaican music that was exploding out of the island in 1968. And while they certainly didn't invent that new genre, it's hugely significant that the golden age of reggae music, widely accepted to have been between 1968 and 1983, formalized its identity with the now eternal 1968 song, Do the Reggae. Aside from the group's outstanding talent, it was led by one of the most electric, charming and charismatic frontmen in modern music. Let's take a look at the legendary Toots and the Metals. The group's origin began with the founder, Frederick Nathaniel Hibbert, who was born in Maypen Clarendon on the 8th of December 1942. The last of 14 children, he was given the nickname Toots by his older brother and took up singing as a member of the choir at the local church while still a young boy. It was all rosy for young Toots until both of his parents died by the time he was 11 years old and was forced to move in with his brother in Kingston who lived in Trenchtown and he eventually landed the job at a barber shop. In those days, Trenchtown was simply bursting with musical energy and while his contemporaries like the Wailers were fairly new to music, he was already a seasoned choir member with a phenomenal singing voice. So while faithfully sticking to his barbershop day job, he stayed on the pulse of the music scene, always singing and playing his guitar any chance he could get. He made friends with two aspiring singers in Nathaniel Jerry Matthias and Raleigh Gordon in 1962, who had heard him singing and playing his guitar while walking past the barbershop one day. They formed a trio and started playing on the local scene in Trenchtown and quickly made a name for themselves due to their exquisite harmonies and Toots' powerful soul gospel singing style which he had developed from his days in the church. They were first known as the Vikings, then later became known as the Metals, partly in tribute to Toots' hometown of Maypen. They were discovered by Coxon Dodd and recorded a string of early singles for Studio One. They scored their first hits with tracks like Fever and the gospel-oriented Six and Seven Books of Moses. After two years with Studio One, the Metals worked briefly with ska pioneer and producer Prince Buster before moving to Byron Lee's Dynamic Sounds outfit in 1965. It was while working with Lee that they really began to develop a more mature and polished approach to their music. Their steady rise to fame received a huge boost when they participated in the inaugural edition of the immensely popular Jamaican Independence Festival Song Contest in 1966. Two said in an interview years ago that a certain contestant had hired a busload of people to come and share his performance and because he couldn't afford such, he felt that his group could never win. But backed by Byron Lee's excellent band, the Dragoneers, the Metals performed the now classic song Bam Bam and emerged winners of the contest. The group was suddenly one of the most popular groups in Jamaica and were at the forefront of a booming musical wave that included the Wailers and Jimmy Cliff. But the Swift Rise suffered a major setback when not long after, Toot was arrested on his way back from a concert in Ocho Rios for cannabis possession just a week away from a tour of England. He was sentenced to a year in prison and maintained consistently that he was framed. Something very believable as it was widely known that Toots wasn't a smoker at the time. Ironically, he became a regular herb smoker after he completed his prison sentence. After he was released, he rejoined his group mates and started working with legendary producer Leslie Kong. In those days, Scar had morphed into the slower pre-reggae era of Rocksteady and eventually into reggae. Toots' time behind bars didn't dampen his drive 
and even inspired one of his most iconic songs in 5446, a song he named after his prison number. In 1968, he wrote and recorded a song called Do the Reggae. It was the first time that the world would hear the term reggae, a term that he had derived from a local slang. The song became a huge hit and was used to identify the new sound, which had been known by different names, including Blue Beat. But from then on, that form of music became known as reggae. The group enjoyed fantastic chemistry with Leslie Kong and recorded some of their biggest hits, including Sweet and Dandy and Monkey Man. Monkey Man had a particularly humorous backstory. Leslie Kong called Truth to the studio one day and told him to write a song about one of his brothers who was really ugly. Truth was really scared because Leslie Kong's brother was a very big and mean guy. So he approached Kong's brother for permission to do the song to avoid getting beaten up after recording it. Kong's brother found it funny, but Toots, still being very careful, wrote the song about a pretty lady in love with a very ugly man. And upon release, Monkey Man became Toots and the Metal's first overseas hit, reaching number 47 on the UK charts, and also crossed into the US market. The group would enter again for the Jamaican Song Festival in 1969 and won the competition with the song Sweet and Dandy. The Metal's were soaring again. And in 1970, they played a huge show at Wembley Stadium. And from then on, the music began to gain major traction in that country. Sadly, Leslie Kong died in 1971, but they kept working with the label's production team until Chris Blackwell signed the group to Island Records in 1974. By then, they had been introduced to a huge global audience after appearing in the classic Jamaican movie The Harder They Come, starring Jimmy Cliff. Blackwell saw the potential global superstar in Toots and decided that the group, which had been known as the Metals for more than 10 years, would now be known as Toots and the Metals. The band released their first album for Island Records in Funky Kingston and followed that up with Reggae God Soul in 1976. Putting it mildly, the group was by the end of the decade an international sensation with super strong fan bases in US and Europe and a very busy touring schedule going on tour with huge rock bands like The Who and The Eagles. They attempted to get into the Guinness Book of Records for recording, pressing and releasing an album in 24 hours and actually achieved it, though an administrative pitch kept them from making it into the Guinness Book of Records. But in 1982, Toots and his two partners amicably agreed to go their separate ways and bring an end to the Metals project after 20 years. Toots continued touring as a solo artist but didn't release any new material until 1988 when he released the album Toots in Memphis, which featured the rhythm section of Sly Dunbar and Robbie Shakespeare. The album was nominated for a Grammy and received glowing reviews. By 1990, Toots had revived the Metals band without Jerry Mathias and Raleigh Gordon and kicked off another prolific period of extensive touring and studio work. In that decade, he got two Grammy nominations for the albums and Our Live in 1990 and for Scar Father in 1998. He eventually backed the Grammy for Best Reggae Album in 2005 for the album True Love. And in 2012, he was awarded the Jamaican Order of Distinction for his contributions to Jamaican music and kept on doing what he loved best, recording and touring. But in 2013, he was struck in the head by a large vodka bottle thrown by somebody in the crowd while performing in the US. The perpetrator was eventually caught and Toots even wrote to the judge to give the lad a mild sentence, but the offender still got six months in jail. Toots suffered a concussion and several cuts, but in the long term, the effects of that injury caused him to forget the lyrics to his own songs. He took an extensive break from touring and recording, but made a comeback with brand new music in August 2020 with an album that was called Got To Be Tough, but it turned out to be something of a curtain call as he fell ill with respiratory issues which were later found out to be symptoms of COVID-19 and passed on in Kingston on September 11, 2020 at the age of 77. The next year, in 2021, his last album, Got To Be Tough, backed the Grammy Award for Best Reggae Album. So that was the end of Toots Hibbert, who was one of the greatest artists to ever come out of Jamaica. A thoroughbred performer, devoted family man and cultural icon. His phenomenal voice captivated millions and alongside his old friend Bob Marley took reggae into the world's consciousness. Toots Hibbert still holds the record 
for the most number one songs in Jamaican history with 31 chart topping singles. He more than deserves his place in the pantheons of the legends of world music, not just for his amazing musical contributions, but for giving a name to the genre of music that we love so much today. So there you have it. Thank you for watching the video today. Please leave a like, subscribe, and until next time, Jobless.